Welcome to the DECA rotation on digital design and manufacturing. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Onshape CAD package to create a simple device that lets you make sure that you can get the most out of your toothpaste tubes. Uh, to do that, we're just going to check that you've got your Onshape uh, CAD package set up correctly, first of all. It assumes that you've already created your educational account and that you've logged into that in your web browser. So to be able to check your settings, just click on your name in the top right hand corner and then click on my account. Now you'll find this a lot easier to do if you've got a mouse uh, with a left and a right mouse button and also with a scroll wheel which allows you to zoom in and out. Once you've got into your account, left click on preferences and here you can change the settings. Now although English may not be your first language it's a lot easier if you keep the software running in English for the moment because if you've got any problems while you're trying to follow through the tutorials it makes it easier for your teacher to help you. In terms of the units go for millimeters, degree, kilogram and we'll change the length of decimal places to 0.12. To change all of these settings just left click on the little arrow, pick the appropriate setting and likewise do the same on decimal places and you can change the time format I prefer 24 hour but if you like 12 hour then you can set that to 12 hour. Once you've made your changes left click on save changes and then left click on on shape at the top of the screen to take us back to uh, the front screen that the program loads into each time you start it. Now you can see here there's lots of files and folders that I've already created. Uh, yours is likely to be blank because this is likely to be the first time that you've used the software. So we'll create a folder to save our work in. So left click on create, left click on folder and we'll just type in digital D and M E C A and left click on create. You'll see that the folder's arrived here and I'm going to left click on that to open it and now I'm going to create the document. So I'm going to left click on create, I'm going to left click on document and I'm going to just simply call it TPTS for toothpaste tube squeezer. Left click on OK and that will now take us into the modeling view. So as the screen loads, you'll see that over on the left hand side, we've got top, front and right. And these correspond to these three work planes that we have in our modeling area in the middle of the screen. So as I ho hover over each one, you can see that they're outlined in orange. And also if I hover over them in the actual design screen, you can see that their edges get highlighted in orange. Along here we've got lots of different uh, tools. These are context sensitive so they will change as we change what we're doing in the modeling area. Now we're actually going to model this on the top work plane. So I'm going to hover the mouse over the edge of the top work plane. I'm going to right click the mouse button, right mouse button and left click on new sketch. Now it's a lot easier if I'm viewing straight onto what I'm drawing like looking down on a piece of paper. So I can right click in space and then left click on normal to sketch plane or I could press the N key for normal to on the keyboard. So here's uh, the modeling view. We're looking right down on top of the top work plane and we have the uh, right work plane and the front work plane intersecting at the origin and we're going to draw our first simple shape around that origin. We've, uh, where we started our sketch, we've got the sketch up here to tell us what sketch we're on. We're actually going to use the multi-tool. We can use the inscribed or the circumscribed polygon. We're going to go for the inscribed polygon. So we can select that and then just move to the origin. And once we're over the origin, left click to place the center and come out and left click again to place our shape. Uh, now we, we want a triangle, so this is a hexagon with six sides. As I move the mouse towards the centre, it reduces the number of sides. So I've reduced it so that it's now three sides. It's an equilateral triangle. And I'm now going to left click to confirm that choice. I'm now going to do two things. I'm going to make this bottom line horizontal so that it's parallel with the edge of this work plane. So to do that, I'm going to apply a constraint. Depending on the size of your screen, 
Uh, you might only be able to see this constraint and there may be an arrow next to it because I've got quite a big screen here. Uh, I could, I've got several choices. All the different constraints are listed there. And it's this one I want, the horizontal constraint. So I'm going to left click on the horizontal constraint and I'm going to left click on this line. And this is what I want. I want this line below the edge of that work plane and have it horizontal. I now want to set the size of this triangle. So I'm now going to use the dimension tool. So left click on the dimension tool, left click on the bottom line, come down and in somewhere in space, left click. And I'm going to change that to 80. So I'm just going to type in on the keyboard 8 and 0 and hit enter. And you can see that uh, it's made it a bit smaller, but it's labeled that size as 80 millimeters. I can zoom in a little bit by pushing up on the scroll wheel. Now at the moment, this is just an infinitely thin drawing on a work plane. What I want to do is turn this into a three dimensional object. So I'm going to left click over here on the extrude tool and it defaults to 25 millimeters. So it's making a great big chunky triangle, like a bit of Toblerone perhaps. Other chocolate bars are available. I'm going to left click on the dimension and I'm going to change that to six just by pressing six on the keyboard. I'm going to check that this is saying new. It's the first thing we've created in this part, so it's going to be new. And then I'm just going to left click the tick. So there's my six millimeter thick triangle. I am now going to round off the three corners. So I'm going to select the fillet tool, uh, which is this one. So fillet means a radius. I'm going to change the size by left clicking on the number and entering five. Sometimes it defaults to five. And then I'm just going to left click on each of the corners. Now, if I can't see this corner, if I hold the right mouse button down and hold it down, I can spin the model around and then I can left click on that corner. Once I've done all three corners, I can click on the tick to confirm. Notice that on this, we were adding a feature to the model that was already there. Whereas previously, when we created the solid block, we were uh, adding a feature to the sketch. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create a slot in here for the toothpaste tube to go through and be squeezed. So I'm going to right click on this face. If I hover over the face, you'll see that all the edges have gone orange. I'm going to right click on that face and then I'm going to left click on new sketch. This time I'm going to press the N key for normal two on the keyboard and it will spin the model around so that I'm looking straight down on it. I'm going to use the center point rectangle. So if I go to the rectangle tools, I've already got that selected, but if you left click on the arrow, you can pick a corner rectangle and a lined rectangle, which means you can set it at an angle, but I want the center point rectangle, so I'm going to left click on that. I'm going to move the mouse pointer over to the origin, and then I'm just going to come down from the origin, so I'm lining up with the origin, and I'm also lined up with the edge of that work plane. I'm going to left click to place the center, and I'm just going to drag out a rectangle and left click again. I'm now going to use the dimension tool to dimension this. So I'm going to click on the bottom line, come down, left click, and I'm going to type in 50 for 50 millimeters. And I'm then going to left click on the right line, move over to the side, left click to place the dimension, and I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard to change that to 3 millimeters. Finally, I'm going to left click on the origin and left click on the middle of the rectangle and then come over here into space again and I'm going to type in 1-2 for 12 millimeters and hit return. Now this time I want to cut this out of our solid piece of material. So I'm holding down the right mouse button just to spin it around so you can see what's going on. I'm going to use the extrude tool but this time instead of new or add which it's defaulted to I'm going to left click on to remove and I'm going to change the end condition from blind by clicking on the little arrow to through all. So it's just going to cut that rectangular shape out all the way through the solid model. Left click the tick to confirm and there you can see it goes all the way through. I'm now going to add uh, a couple of fillets. So let's use the fillet tool again. It's probably remembered the last number which is a 5 so I'm going to left click on there. I'm going to change that to 1.5 I'm going to hold the mouse button down and I'm just going to maneuver this and I'm going to use the scroll wheel to zoom in on the mouse so that I can select the inside corners of the little slot that we created. Hold the right mouse button down to spin it around, select that corner, move it around with the right, right mouse button held down, select that corner. So I've got all four radiuses done or radii, left click and uh, 
were there. Now I'm going to uh, do the same on the slot. So I'm going to create another fillet and this time I'm going to click on the top edge of one side of the slot and you'll see it automatically goes all the way around. I'm happy with that so I'm going to left click and then turn it over the other side, set the radius tool again and do the same and left click. So we've got a little uh, radius which will help the toothpaste tube slide in and out. The last thing that I want to do in terms of adding a, a feature using a sketch is just to create a little dimple at the top that will allow me um, to kind of put my thumb in and get a bit of grip. So this time I'm just going to hold the right mouse button down and spin it around and I'm going to select the right work plane. So hover over the right work plane so the edges turn orange, right click and then left click on new sketch. Uh, I'll right click again to go view normal to the sketch plane or I could press the N key and I'm just going to use the scroll wheel to zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit clearer what I'm doing. This time I'm going to use a circle tool, centre circle tool, so I can left click on the arrow, pick the centre circle tool and then I'm just going to come above the edge of this work plane and away from the model and I'm just going to left click and draw a circle. It doesn't matter how big or small I draw that circle because we're going to add some dimensions. So using the dimension tool I'm going to left click on the circumference of the circle and out the way and I'm going to change that to 25 and press enter. So enter 25 on the keyboard. I'm going to change the distance from the edge of the work plane or the origin, it doesn't matter. So this edge of the work plane to the center of the circle and left click to place that and I'm going to make that 21 millimeters. So type in 21 on the keyboard and hit enter. And then from the other work plane to the center, left click and I'm going to make that 16 millimeters. So type in 16 and hit enter. Now what I want to do is I want to revolve this around so that it scoops out a little dimple in the material. So just press N again to go back to looking at it. So I only need a semicircle uh, to remove the dimple. So I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to hover over the center. I'm going to come over to the left, wait for the outside of the circle to go orange, left click. I'm going to hold the mouse button down and then I'm going to let go when it highlights the edge of the circle on the other side. If I clicked and then clicked I'd have a continuous line I'll show you so I've still got the line tool selected if I left click to place left click to finish but it keeps the line going I can left click left click left click left click and keep going uh, to end the line if I did do that I just press escape so I'm just going to select those and delete them because we don't need them so I just press the delete key then to do that. So all I need is a semicircle now. So I'm going to delete half of the circle. So I'm going to use the trim tool and I'm going to trim away half the circle. So highlight the circle, left click, and I've now just got that semicircle. So this time I'm going to use the revolve feature. So left click on the revolve feature. It's already picked up the sketch that I want, but what axis do I want to revolve that about? Well, left click in the axis dialog box and then left click on the straight line and that spins around. Now you can see at the moment it's added a ball on there so I want to change add to remove and you can now see that that's scooped out that little dimple and I can left click to confirm that. Finally I'm just going to get rid of these sharp edges so I'm going to go back to the fillet tool I'm going to change the distance to 2.5 and I'm just going to highlight this edge and it will pick up the others and I'm going to do the same on the back edge so left click and it will pick up the others just left click to confirm that and if I hold the right mouse button down there is the completed device that's our completed model so the final thing to do before we can uh, put this into our 3d printing software is to export this as an STL file a stereo lithography file so to do that I'm going to come over to the part studio I'm going to right click on Part Studio, left click on Export, give it a name. So I shall call it Toothpaste Tube Squeezer. Format is STL. If it's not an STL, click on the arrow and pick the STL format. It needs to be binary. Again, I can pick the uh, format from the drop down menu. Units need to be millimeters. Resolution, fine. 
download, click OK, and it will bring up a dialog box to where I want to save that on my computer. This is cloud-based, but we need the file on our computer to be able to print it. Let's put it where you want to uh, save it, and then click on Save, and you will have created your first Onshape model and converted it to an STL file so that we can print it.